it's uh, it will be nice to see like everyone's progress. Uh, so I want to start out by um, by talking a bit about uh, like one particular area of Mavlib. Um, it's uh, may not maybe a very like special area, but it's uh, it has a lot of uh, activity uh, lately, and it might be representative of uh, like many other areas of Mavlib that uh, work very similarly. Uh, so in this talk, I will talk a bit about the, the measure theory library as a whole and uh, at the end focus a bit more on like my individual contributions. Um, uh, so the measure theory library, uh, if I uh, count the lines of, by lines of code, is about 4% of all of Mavlib. Um, but uh, so that doesn't sound all that much, but despite that, there's a lot of uh, activity, uh, and this is uh, in this slide. I have some of the activity that has been happening in the measure theory library uh, just over the last couple months, uh, and some upcoming uh, work. Um, and you can see that like many people are contributing, both new and like uh, veteran users of of Lean. So uh, in the last in, uh, a couple of months ago, uh, Yuri uh, formalized uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus, uh, part one, and Jensen's inequality. Uh, actually, as of uh, in my time zone last night, as of 12 hours ago, the uh, second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus has been uh, committed to Mavlib. Um, the, we, uh, Remy has been working on uh, LP spaces and Hilder's inequality. Uh, and and uh, you see that there's uh, many other contributions. And then there, uh, this is of course uh, just some highlights and there's many other people who are working on, on, on uh, or, or has, have made uh, contributions to uh, the measure theory library just for other projects and, and what they need. Uh, the, the original library was built uh, by Johannes Holzel, uh, Mario, and uh, Zuhang. Um, and um, they, they really built a great foundation that uh, like other people are working on now. Uh, so because uh, very, uh, many participants uh, in this meeting come from various different backgrounds, let me give uh, a quick introduction of some of the basic definitions of measure theory, uh, just uh, for the people who are not too familiar with it uh, to get a little up to speed. So uh, if we have um, a set X or, or type X, uh, then um, a sigma algebra on uh, X is just a collection of subsets uh, that uh, contains the empty set um, if it contains some set A, it also contains its complement. And if it contains a sequence, a countable sequence of sets, it contains uh, the union and therefore also the intersection of those sets. Um, then given a sigma algebra, we can define a measure on this sigma algebra. And a measure is uh, a function from that assigns uh, uh, well, measure to each of the sets in the sigma algebra, uh, and they are valued in the non-negative extended reals uh, in such a way that the empty set has measure zero and the measure is countably additive. So if I have uh, a sequence uh, of disjoint sets, then the measure of the union is the sum of the individual measures. And uh, an outer measure is uh, uh, a bit like a, a measure, but uh, defined on all the subsets of X. So uh, for every, uh, it's defined on all of the power set of X. Uh, but in, uh, and it also sends uh, zero, the empty set to zero. Uh, it's monotone. Uh, the measure is also, uh, a measure is also monotone, but that follows from uh, from the countably additive assumption. Uh, and an outer measure is also countably sub-additive. Um, 
which means that uh, if I take a union of sets, they don't necessarily have to be disjoint. I might not get exactly the sum of the individual uh, outer measures, uh, but I can at least bound it above by the sum. Um, and yeah, and so so these are three basic definitions of uh, measure theory. Uh, to motivate them, I have to uh, talk a, a bit more, but uh, let me not do that here. I'm not giving a course on measure theory. Uh, but so uh, these definitions uh, play a very fundamental role. And uh, in the library, there are some design decisions to work uh, very nicely with them. So uh, like uh, many parts of Mavlib, uh, we use type classes um, for uh, sigma algebras. So in uh, mathematics, a, a type X together with a sigma algebra is often called a, a measurable space. And so in Mavlib, we don't, di uh, direct, don't specifically or sh uh, talk about sigma algebras, uh, but we uh, talk about measurable spaces, which is a type class on a type uh, and gives exactly the uh, a sigma algebra on that type. Uh, so then there's uh, an interesting definition of uh, measures. Um, so in Mavlib, we actually define outer measures first. Um, uh, and outer measures can be uh, evaluated on any set. And so actually we define a measure as a specific kind of outer measure with two extra conditions. So this makes the definition of measure equivalent to uh, the traditional definition, but it has a, as a, has it as advantage that we can evaluate a measure on any set uh, without having to prove that the set is measurable. Uh, and of course, for many lemmas, we have to we have to include measurability conditions. Uh, but then there we are we are again following uh, something we do in a lot of areas in Mavlib, like try to totalize a function uh, and define it on all sets, uh, and then only have uh, the conditions uh, when proving lemmas about it. So in, in this particular case, we can nicely do that via outer measures. So a measure is just an outer measure with two extra conditions, namely, uh, if we restrict it to measurable sets, then it's countably additive. And we, uh, we uh, can calculate the value of, uh, uh, of the measure on, on, a, on any set, so in particular the non-measurable sets, uh, by this formula. Uh, so the, the value on measurable sets determines uh, the value on all other sets. And so, uh, so uh, and, and the third thing is uh, that we have two ways to introduce a measure uh, in um, on a type. So one thing you can say is, well, that uh, you have a type alpha, which has a measurable space structure and um, and, um, um, and you explicitly introduce a measure, uh, which you can uh, call whatever. So this is useful uh, if you have multiple measures on a type or uh, you want to, uh, or, or when developing the library, we use this method always. And a second way is uh, to have a measure like associated with the type via uh, the type class measure space. And then the measure is called volume. And you can use all the lemmas for measures for it because it's just a regular measure. But this is a nice way to uh, both be able to explicitly introduce a measure uh, or to use it uh, to get it via type class. Um, so the measure theory library contains uh, two uh, different definitions of integrals, the Lebesgue integral and the Buckner integral. So uh, the Lebesgue integral is for functions that take their values in the non-negative uh, extended reals. So the, um, the reals greater or equal to zero with uh, infinity. Um, Appended. So in, in Mavlib, that is called E N N real. 
And so for simple functions, we can easily define it um, as just a sum over uh, over its uh, all its values it, it takes, and then the measure of like uh, the uh, region where it takes that value. Uh, and then for any function, we can define uh, the Lebesgue measure as just supremum of all the uh, the integrals of all the smaller simple functions. So that's a very nice definition. Uh, but of course, we also want to integrate uh, like real valued functions or co complex valued functions. And uh, that is um, where the Buckner integral comes in. And so let me go through uh, uh, in a little bit of detail through the Buckner integral because not everyone might be familiar with it. Uh, so the Buckner integral is for functions that take values in an arbitrary uh, Banach space. Um, and the Buckner integral actually depends on the Lebesgue integral. Uh, so for uh, the, Lebesgue, uh, the for the Buckner integral, we have to require that a function is integrable. And a function is integrable if we if uh, when we take the Lebesgue integral of its norm, uh, so this is just its uh, pointwise norm, uh, we get a finite uh, number. Um, and then we can take a look at the uh, the type of all um, integrable functions. And so we can define the L1 space to be the uh, integral functions with respect to the uh, measure mu, uh, modulo uh, almost everywhere equality. So two functions are uh, equal in uh, this quotient, uh, this L1 space, if uh, the, the measure where uh, of uh, points where they are different is uh, a null. And then we can define the Buckner integral uh, in uh, this, uh, well, we can define the Buckner integral again. We first do it for simple functions, and then it will be a, a sum, which is basically the same as the sum on the last slide. Uh, and uh, then uh, we uh, use the fact that simple functions are dense in this L1 space, because so this L1 space uh, comes with a topology. Uh, because it has a metric determined by the integrability uh, of the norm. And uh, because the simple functions are dense, we can continuously extend uh, the integral uh, for simple functions to all integrable functions, or at least all elements in the L1 space. And then we can define it for an, an actual function by just taking a re representative. The simple functions are dense, even there's no continuity assumption on F or anything, right? Uh, no, just an integrable. So assumption. F could be some completely discontinuous map from X to the ball, the sort of the, the sphere, the unit sphere, and then yes. norm of F would always be one. Uh, okay. Yeah, and, and then you can approximate it like by, by a sequence of simple functions uh -huh. uh, and get arbitrarily close to it. It, it's it's formalized in MATLAB, so uh, the, the the details of the proof are in the library. Okay, so um, for the second part of the slide, I'll talk a bit uh, about uh, the the specific contributions I've uh, made to to the to the pressure theory libraries, and in particular product measures and Haar measure. So uh, we define the product of uh, sigma finite measures. Uh, so sigma finiteness is a condition of a measure, which uh, says that the measure is uh, can be approximated uh, like finitely. So it, it, uh, so a finite measure is just a measure where uh, the measure of the whole space is a finite number, and sigma finite is the next nicest thing. It says that uh, we have a, a we can cover this uh, space by a countable collection of measurable sets, uh, which each have finite measure. So at least we can approximate the, the measure on the whole space by finite numbers. And we've defined... Uh, the key defined key pro sigma refers to countable. And the, the keyword is countable. Yeah. Yes, this, the, there's a lot of sigma prefixes and that 
uh, means countable, and it also in sigma algebra. So an algebra is a thing that is closed under finite unions and intersections and hence sigma algebra as infinite bonds. Um, and yeah, so we, we currently only have product measures for sigma finite measures uh, because that is uh, most of the used cases and uh, the theory is uh, more complicated when you drop the sigma finiteness assumption. Uh, and if you have two sigma finite measures on two different types, we can uh, define the product measure on the product. Um, and it's defined uh, to be this uh, integral. So I was uh, planning to draw a little picture here, but I, uh, the annotation tools are not working. But uh, so this, uh, so if you think of the, the set A as some region, then these sets are sort of the vertical uh, lines in the region. And so we take the measure of the vert uh, of all the vertical lines and then integrate that horizontally uh, over uh, one space. Uh, and of course, this is a very asymmetric definition. But uh, fortunately, if we uh, take the symmetric uh, expression, it will be equal to this one. Uh, and a fun fact, uh, there are some uh, uh, so measures from a monad called the uh, Geary monad. Um, I'm not going to define it here, uh, but because we all like monads, uh, here's a very slick definition of the product measure uh, using monads. And it's just a, a very simple, uh, um, very simple with bind and return. Uh, so. If you like monads, this should uh, bring joy to everyone. Um, so uh, there, uh, the, there's, uh, there's a very important result for product measures uh, called Fubini's theorem. And uh, part of, uh, of it is uh, Tonelli's theorem. So Tonelli's theorem is for the Lebesgue integral as uh, Fubini's theorem is for the Bachner integral. And both of them uh, state uh, how to compute the integral in a product measure. Uh, and uh, because we can compute in two ways, it also is, uh, gives conditions. When can you interchange the order of integrals? So Tonelli's theorem is very nice. It just says, if I have a measurable function on the product into the extended non-negative reals, uh, that is measurable, um, which uh, like similar to a continuous function just means like if I take a pre-image of a measurable set, uh, I can get a measurable set. Uh, then uh, we can compute the integral in the product in two ways, namely by doing the individual integrals. And so these are the notations I have for first integrating with respect to y and then integrating with respect to x, or first integrating with respect to x and then integrating with respect to y. And so all three of them are equal. Um, and in particular, um, uh, the whatever I integrate in these expressions are measurable functions. So for example, in this middle expression, if I just take the, the, the inner integral and treat that as a function of x, that is a measurable function as function of x. Uh, and Fubini's theorem is its counterpart for uh, the Bachner integral. Um, and so this says if I have a function into a, uh, from the product into a Banach space uh, that is integrable, uh, then I can, the, the same formula holds, but now the integral is the, Lebesgue, uh, is the Bachner integral and not the Lebesgue integral. So here I need the integrability condition uh, and uh, and well, I should actually be more precise. I also need that f is measurable, but uh, in in Mavlib we have the the notion of integrability contains measurability, and actually that is changing in pull requests right now to to be changed to being almost ever equal to a measurable function. So it's uh, uh, which generalizes the Bachner integral in a very nice way. Uh, Sebastian is, is uh, making this refactor. Um, 
Yeah, so under the integrability condition, we can also interchange the order of the integrals and, and that's also equal to the integral in the product. Uh, and there's also a nice uh, condition for a function being integrable and it's just, uh, <clears throat> so saying that F is integrable is equivalent to saying that uh, for almost all X, uh, this function in Y is integrable and then uh, the integral of the norm is integrable. So, uh, so these are uh, Fubini and Tonelli's theorems, uh, which are uh, very useful in measure theory. Uh, so, some, uh, so uh, I'm, I'm not going into the, the proof of the theorem because it's, uh, there's a lot of uh, technical lemmas in there, uh, but here's some remarks on it. So, uh, I had a pretty hard time finding like complete proof of Fubini's theorem for Wagner integration. Like often it's done for uh, for integration in, for just real valued functions or something, and then you can take a big shortcut. Uh, but so actually I followed Isabel's formalization, which has a very nice uh, formalization on uh, Wagner integration and Fubini's theorem. And, uh, so I went through some of uh, Isabel's library for some key lemmas and proof ideas in the proof of Fubini's theorem. Um, also, since uh, yesterday, we can uh, a pull request was merged where we can take uh, more than than a binary product. We can now take finite products of measures. So in particular, we have uh, a measure on uh, on R n, which we can compute on boxes. Um, and in the proofs, um, there, there, uh, there are some induction principles that are very nice for, uh, for these kinds of proofs. Uh, and, and I, I very much like induction principles for all kinds of objects. So these are two induction principles uh, to prove something for like measurable functions and integrable functions. So for example, the first one is very useful for Tunnelli's theorem which says that if you have a measurable function in the extended non-negative reals, and you have a property that you want to prove for all of those, uh, then it's sufficient to first uh, show it for like characteristic functions or constant multiples on them, and then show that they are closed on their addition and uh, uh, like monotone supremum. And there's a similar induction principle for integrable functions. Uh, and these kind of induction principles are useful for proving uh, properties in, in a very uh, like systematic way. Floris, do you yes. remember who wrote the Isabel formalization? I think it was uh, Johannes uh, Holzel. Um, or at least he, he did uh, big parts of it. Uh, there's there's also uh, a paper on on, the, on on measure theory in Isabel. Um, um, okay, so then lastly, I want to talk a bit about Har measure, and I'll uh, I'll uh, be a little quick to so that I finish on time. Uh, so uh, here's the definition of a regular measure. Uh, let me skip the details, but uh, it's uh, a measure on a topological space with some nice uh, conditions for evaluating it on compact uh, and open sets. Uh, so uh, uh, an important definition for the higher measure is uh, invariant measures. So if I, have a, 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 if I have a topological group, so that's just a group where, uh, with a topology where the group operations are continuous. Then a left invariant measure uh, is just a measure where, um, uh, where if I take the measure of a set, it's equal to like a left translate of, of that set, where left translate is just the image of the set under left multiplication with uh, an arbitrary group element. Uh, and of course, similarly, we have uh, right invariant measures, uh, but uh, those theories are very much dual. And so then uh, uh, we have, uh, we can construct a higher measure. And so 
uh, given a locally compact Hausdorff topological group where the definitions of uh, locally compact and Hausdorff are given here, uh, we can uh, find a left invariant regular measure on this topological group um, uh, that is called the left higher measure on G. And it's also unique in the, in the sense that it's determined up to a constant multiple. So if I have any other left invariant regular measure on G, then those are multiples of each other. Um, and so for example, like the real numbers under addition uh, from a locally compact host of a group. Uh, so the higher measure is uh, a multiple of the Lebesgue measure. And if you choose the higher measure uh, correctly, of course, it's equal to the Lebesgue measure. Uh, in MathLib, we still have to refactor uh, the Lebesgue measure to be defined in terms of the higher measure. Currently, they are still separate. Uh, but um, but with the uniqueness of higher measure, it's at least trivial to prove them in cool. Um, so um, let me, for time constraints, uh, skip the, the proof idea. Um, but um, yeah, so for the uniqueness, uh, let me make a couple of remarks. So if we have a left invariant measure, we can also uh, it has this nice equality for integrals. So integrals are also left, uh, left invariant. Um, and then we can uh, compute uniqueness uh, by computing a certain double integral in a, uh, in a smart way in two ways. Uh, and then we use uh, Tonelli's theorem to also swap the order of integration. Uh, and, and then we get that like, uh, the, the measures are multiples of each other. And uh, this, uh, I've formalized this locally and it's uh, almost sorry free, which of course might still mean it takes uh, an unknown amount of time to finish it, but hopefully that will be finished soon. Um, yeah, so uh, let me end on some uh, like uh, directions which, uh, or, or like, projects we can uh, do with the current measure theory library, which are like within scope of, uh, of upcoming projects. So given that we have the higher measure, we can uh, open, we open up very exciting areas of mathematics, including abstract harmonic an analysis, uh, Pontryagin duality, and uh, representation theory of locally compact groups. Um, we can do a multivariate calculus like Green's theorem and Stokes theorem. We can do complex uh, analysis like Cauchy's integral formula uh, that Yuri started discussion on in Zulip a while ago. Uh, so there's a lot, still a lot of exciting things to do in the measure theory library. Uh, but my time is up. So thank you for listening and let me know if there are any questions. And thank you very much, Ruiz. Uh, I guess we have, <laughs> we kind of close a bit on it's difficult in, in Zoom. Uh, maybe a, a couple of very quick questions. We will have more time for questions in the, in the breaks and, and on Wonder, but uh, if there are a couple of questions, maybe we can take them. So, so I have a question. Um, yeah. So you, you, you choose one hard measure, um, or do you allow all the multiples? Like, do you have some sort of predicate saying this measure is a higher measure? Uh, well, so the predicate is just it's less invariant, right. uh, less invariant regular measure. Uh, but so yeah, so we uh, we uh, choose a higher measure by giving uh, a specific uh, compact set with non-empty interior. Okay. And then we choose a higher measure in such a way that it assigns measure one to that set. Okay, so if I have a compact topological group, then I can... You can take the normalize the higher measure okay, so that it's, it's a probability measure. Okay, so we should we should uh, now compute the higher measure for, Z, for ZP, for the p-adic numbers. Oh, yeah, that would yeah. be great. Have you already done that? I have not. Okay, cool. Thanks. Are there any plans toward the change of variable formula? I saw some discussion of... Uh, of that in Zulip, but I'm not quite sure 
uh, what, what's the state of that? So actually in the uniqueness uh, proof, uh, I use something very similar to the change of variables formula because this is sort of similar yeah. to the change of variables formula, but I can cheat because uh, uh, like the measure is equal to the left translated measure. So I can get this yeah. specific case of the change of variable formula for free. If it sounds like the last big missing piece from the integration library. Yeah. It, it, if you, I, if I, you accept uh, differential forms and stokes and stuff like that, yeah. the elementary story. Yeah. Yeah, I agree that we should uh, add that. Okay. Thank you very much again. I guess we'll switch to our next speaker. If 